Stop scrolling. I'm gonna show you how to get an Amex Platinum, a Sapphire Reserve, an Apple Card, and a Capital One Venture X. These are your metal credit cards. So the secret is not to do shit like this. So I see this happening all the time on this forum and a lot of people are really just not factoring in the numbers. So all of this stuff that you see on social media, all these courses that are being sold, everybody's gonna get rich, everybody's gonna make a shit ton of money. It's just not that easy. All these people going out and getting LLCs and getting cars under businesses and opening up Turo. They're looking at cash flow, but they're not factoring in long-term depreciation, especially if the used auto market takes a massive shit, which I think it's gonna do soon. These people are gonna be in for a lot of trouble and their credit's gonna get destroyed. So when you're running a business, you have to look at all the numbers. You can't just look at a monthly cash flow. Cash flow's the lifeline of a, a business, right? But at the end of the day, you still have to have an exit point on all of these vehicles. Just because something's making your monthly payment and giving you an, a couple hundred extra dollars a month doesn't mean that you're gonna be able to rent that vehicle out for seven or eight years like your loan and get the same amount of money that you're getting the whole time. A 2023 vehicle does not rent for what a 2015 does. So your rental fees are going to go down and down and down after the vehicle has been used and your monthly payments are gonna stay the same over the entire seven year, or eight year term. So what's gonna end up happening is, is you're gonna get more and more upside down in that vehicle as time goes. Well, I had a guy yesterday tell me that he was renting out his used TRX because it was gonna be paid off for him using Turo and he would get a free vehicle. Well, yeah, after eight years, how much usable life do you think that TRX is going to have left after you have, have had eight years of people smashing the shit out of it every day because they're renting your truck? So I don't know. I don't know with these courses. I don't know with this company in general. Um, I'm still giving it a shot to see, but I think it's going to be critical on the vehicles that you're purchasing. They're going to have to retain their value. You're not going to be able to have these trips that are going crazy. I literally just had somebody rent a booking from me um, on our van, which is a Chrysler Pacifica Hybrid Pinnacle 2022. And the mileage we dropped down to 150 miles a day because we were getting killed on mileage. So he messages me and says, well, can I negotiate the overage on mileage? Cause I'm gonna drive about 500 miles over. I wanna take it to Florida. No, you can't negotiate on the overage. You're already renting my vehicle for $600 and you're getting to put 1500 miles on it. So you want to put 2,000 miles on it? The only person that's a good deal for is the person renting it. So no, I have these uh, overages in place because the vehicle's depreciating. I still think I'm going to get absolutely hosed on this thing. But the only reason that we're renting it is because we wanted to keep it for road trips on ourselves. Now, we're purchasing some new vehicles in cash that I think will probably end up making us some money, but you have to be able to pay the vehicle off in full within a two-year period and still have some usable life, either in retained value or the ability to rent it. If you're buying a brand new vehicle with a seven or eight year loan, and within the first couple years, you're able to make the payment and maybe a couple hundred bucks on top of that, you are gonna be swimming in debt and depreciation in that vehicle come three, four, five years, especially if the market takes a shit. So more and more, I see these Turo hosts every day. They got sold on the dream. They were on social media. They bought these fucking courses that everybody's selling and they thought that they were gonna get rich. And yeah, some people scaled to some really high numbers, but when you go and dig in and talk to them, their 250 vehicles that they're managing or that they own, they haven't sold any of them yet. So they haven't realized any of their losses. This could potentially put a lot of vehicles onto the market at a very low price if some of these sellers have to cut losses or if the repos start to happen. So I have some big concerns about what's going to be happening from this. We're seeing a lot of Airbnb arbitrage people that were going out and doing rents and getting themselves overextended. The housing market probably going to be a little bit safer because we don't have the, you know, overextension that we were seeing on auto loans. We had like a subprime 
going on in auto loans like it was 2008 and people were buying houses. They were literally approving everybody, didn't matter, weren't verifying income, everybody was getting car loans. So a lot of this shit you see on TikTok, look at my six Lamborghinis and my Ferraris. Yeah, it's business credit. And when the business cash flow stops or the depreciation gets high, those businesses are going to go belly up. So just be careful out there. Not everything as it appears on social media.